All right, y'all, welcome back to the Anthony the Same Show. We have a very special guest today. Two gentlemen that are doing some amazing things here in the city of Memphis. You guys may be familiar with United Way, the United Way of the Mid-South. Long-time organization celebrating 100 years here in the Mid-South Memphis area. But they're going to tell you more about what they do. I'm excited about these guys. I work with these gentlemen. For those of y'all who <laughs> wonder if I have a job outside of doing this show, I do. And uh, I work with these two uh, very extraordinary gentlemen who are doing some amazing things in the city. They're here to share some of those things with you. I have the Chief Digital and Operations Officer, Mr. Jarvis Harris, on the far end, and also the President and CEO of United Way of the Mid-South, Dr. Kenneth Robinson. Gentlemen, how y'all doing? How you doing? Glad man, to be with I'm you. Man, I'm good, man. I'm good to be employed out here, man. Glad, <laughs> glad to be enjoying the check. But uh, I, do, I do take a lot of pride in United Way of the Mid-South. It's an organization that I've worked for uh, part-time as far back as 2019. I started full-time uh, earlier this year. Um, just a great organization, man. It has just a total focus on families, helping people get from where they are from where they, to where they dream to be, man. Yes, and, sir. Uh, this, this isn't me kissing up to my bosses. This is genuine. <laughs> uh, like, it's, it's just a no-nonsense organization that uh, I'm glad to be a part of. I'm glad you guys could come on to Anthony the Saints show to highlight some of the amazing things that are already happening and things that are, you know, hopefully coming very soon. And we're really just <clears throat> glad to have you at United Way of the Mid-South. Thank you, sir. I'm glad to be there. You're glad to be there for sure. <laughs> but uh, tell everyone about uh, United Way of the Mid-South, for those, those who don't know, and some of the ser services that are offered through United Way of the Mid-South. Yeah, well, we really appreciate you. Uh, United Way is about people like you, people mm -hmm. that have stories, people that mm -hmm. are part of this community, people that have lives and families and children. We are 100 years old this year, but mm -hmm. we are not your grandparents' United Way. Right. What we really do is mobilize resources in mm -hmm. the community. That means uh, dollars, but it's also agency supports and services resources. And so what most people remember about United Way is that we are a public charitable foundation. We ask all the people in the public to give us their funds, mm -hmm. and we make grants to high-performing agencies. Mm -hmm. These are agencies that are doing serious work. And in the last few years, uh, they we are doing aligned grant making. So we uh, give grants to agencies and programs of services that are helping people move, yes, from where they are to where they dream to be. Mm -hmm. Socioeconomic mobility, people that are trying to get uh, out of the situations that they've been stuck in, people that are trying to advance. And the second thing we do, which we're going to talk about, is that we uh, mobilize agencies to come together in a network, a mm -hmm. broad, expansive network. Anthony, about 130 organizations right. that have just decided that if they work, here it is, in a united way, that if someone comes into the door, one of their agencies, uh, uh, we've now trained them and they've agreed to collaborate together. They will provide the service that they can do, but then they'll ask people, what else do you need? And so this this network uh, is something that we've pulled together. It's collective action, collective impact, mm -hmm. 130 agencies providing over 200 services. Anthony, if you walk through any of those single doors, they can hook you up not only to what they yes, can sir. do for you, but they will help you get to the other supports and services in that vast network. You don't even have to start over telling your story. Right. We can put you into a database if you'd like. We can help pull your uh, needs together, and provide all the supports and services. I mean, that is really working in a united way right. for individuals and families. We touched uh, about 280,000 lives last year. So it's a major, major thing, yeah. United Way of the Mid-South. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to be a part of it, like I said, uh, with the Driving the Dream Network. Like you said, over 130 organizations that are all – trying to move the, the the dream forward in the city of Memphis, give yeah, people hope. Yeah, and Those you know, it, we discovered that if you're really stuck in generational poverty, you mm -hmm. might have hopes and dreams and aspirations, but you got a lot of issues and a lot of mm -hmm. problems. Right. And no one previously has really tried to pull all those individual agencies that do great work right. on their own. But now they can say, you know, I'm part of driving the dream. Right. We're not just hoping that people's dreams come to fruition. We're not just uh, wishing. We're not just even praying for it. Mm -hmm. But at United Way, we are driving that. We are facilitating. Mm -hmm. We're opening the doors and helping people move and advance economically. And they tell us it's working. Right. You know. And um, United Way is a not-for-profit organization here Absolutely. in the Mid-South. What do you feel is the current and the future state even for not-for-profit organizations here 
In well, Minnesota. you know, I, I think it's a challenge. And the um, pandemic uh, was a huge stressor for nonprofits mm -hmm. and not-for-profit organizations. Uh, obviously, a lot of organizations had to close. They had to change what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And then during those three mm -hmm. years or so, uh, the world changed. Right. Uh, donors had to pull back a little bit and make sure that they were taking care of their own family, their own children's employers, where we often get a lot of our donors uh, slowed down a little bit so they could take care of their uh, bottom line. Mm -hmm. And then the stressors, the needs for programs and services from those nonprofits actually went up. So uh, sort of matching the need with decreasing donations. Mm -hmm. And then uh, folks started thinking about what they wanted to do with their lives. You came to United Way right. of the Mid-South, mm -hmm. but a lot of people left their nonprofit jobs. Mm -hmm. They started looking around and searching and seeking. And, and so uh, salary stressors became hard for nonprofits. It's a tough time. I've, I've got a long experience working with uh, young people in the inner city. Uh, yeah. Kenny Stubblefield, our producer, he does. Yeah. Harry Sharkey, one of our associate producers, he does as well. That's definitely one of my passions. Uh, let people know some of the things that United Way has to offer for the younger generation who they may be products of a generational poverty home, but their needs may be different than their parents who have to pay bills and keep lights on, keep food in the refrigerator, all those type of things. What do you offer for young people that are in well, those households? I think one of the things you know very well, that young people mm -hmm. in households like that do better when their households do better. Yes, sir. So one of the things that helps uh, young people do better in school, and you know, I'm a major advocate for education, mm -hmm. because you might have hopes and dreams and aspirations, but if you don't have the credentials, if you can't put a couple of words together, if you can't uh, finish your degree, uh, then you're going to have a lot of uh, closed doors. And so, mm -hmm. uh, number one, I think we support a lot of organizations that work with young people after school, provide other resources for them, help point them and keep them going in the right direction. Oh, man, that's, that's critical today. Uh, but it is also about helping young people understand that their only dreams don't have to be of being a, an NBA player or an mm -hmm. NFL player. You help to broaden the horizon of their dreams, keep them involved, keep them uh, inspired, keep uh, introducing them to other things in life. Right. Now, you know all about that. I mean, you've mm -hmm. been around and, yeah. and you grew up in this community, but if <clears throat> young people don't have a focus of some, now I'm old. Uh, the other thing we try to do is to bring some other younger people right. uh, into the fold that they can uh, speak and relate and uh, meet uh, young people where they are. Lots of programs, lots of services, after school uh, organizations, but really a major focus on uh, career building and on uh, aspirations and dreams that will last even past best case scenario, an NBA career or an NFL career. Yeah, I, I heard you mention about how you want to bring younger employees in, like myself, like guys like Jarvis uh, to your right, who I mentioned is the chief digital digital and operations officer for United Way. This question is for you, Jarvis. What do you think are some of the uh, struggles? Like, why is it a struggle you think in a lot of non not for profit organizations in Memphis to uh, to utilize things like social media, technology, the the the, the future type of methods? How, where do you why do you feel like there's a disconnect there? Well, I think there's a disconnect because there is a gap. Mm -hmm. uh, so the things like Dr. Robinson said, I think a lot of our nonprofits are ran in a traditional way. Mm -hmm. And because of those traditional means, it's not normal to reach out and say, we're going to have a social media campaign. Mm -hmm. We're going to do mass media in a different way. We're used to radio and we're used to TV. But when we think about the Twitters, the Instagrams, the Facebooks, and mm -hmm. all these other things, I think there is an avenue for us to right, first right. evangelize about the work that nonprofits are doing. Mm -hmm. right. So I think one of the things is, if you say, hey, what is United World of the Mid-South? We're on a campaign to brand the community about United Way. But a lot of nonprofits don't do that. So as we begin to brand the community about who we are, it's about being able to facilitate that information in multiple methods. Yeah. So I think it's, hey, not just radio, not just TV, not just a website, but it's through Instagram, it's through Twitter, it's through podcasts, it's through shows just like this. Mm -hmm. I think it's being able to say, hey, this is who we are, this is our mission, this is where we're going and what we're trying to do, and no better, what we're going to do mm -hmm. with your help. So I think the gap literally sits in the fact that people don't think innovatively. They don't think, so, okay, this has been working. Let's keep it that way. But we're in a new medium yeah. where we have to change how we do stuff, how we raise mm -hmm. funds, how we touch people, even like you talked about with the young people. Right. So they're going to be able to see, hey, there is another way to get there. 
there is another avenue. So seeing people like you and like me, mm. hearing the stories of where Dr. Robinson came from and what mm. he did, mm. being able to tie those things together right. and say, hey, there's a bridge to success that doesn't require shooting, dribbling, or drawing or singing. Mm -hmm. It's something else. And it's, right. it starts with my mind, but we have to be able to let the world know that through different means. Right. So it's just literally that, having somebody can say, hey, we're here, but we're going there. And United Way of the Mid-South, we're here, we're going there. And we're building innovation every single day right. to reach the masses of people. I've, uh, I've you, seen you, you, go ahead. you just got to love this guy. Oh, I mean, yeah. But I mean, th this is why <laughs> he's here. Mm -hmm. uh, he can speak the language and then he can really do the thing right. and really mm -hmm. help us uh, move our own operations into a way that is appealing, uh, that can really reach the mm -hmm. masses. It's why we're here today with you, mm -hmm. Anthony. But um, we have uh, 28,000 uh, new uh, uh, touches on our even on our website. And everybody mm -hmm. doesn't use the website anymore. Right. But if you drive traffic to the website, uh, if we have 9,000 new users over the last three months of right. our social media, if you drive traffic, and Jarvis has taught us that, you know, put something there that is of interest to people, meet them where they are, uh, have uh, some stories and uh, yeah, evolve uh, uh, how we mm -hmm. tell our story as a United Way and make it accessible to people, then, you know, people at least will give you their attention Absolutely. for a moment. Mm -hmm. And it's not just uh, old granddaddies like me, right. you know, who, <laughs> who might look into the United Way of the Well, Well, uh, Jarvis, I've seen billboards throughout the city. I've seen at least two for Driving the Dream. Mm -hmm. I've also seen, I don't know if I'll put this out there yet, but I've seen these very cool kiosks sitting around the building that I've seen you tinkering with and fine-tuning all those type of things. What's coming with that program, with the kiosks I've been seeing? Absolutely. I'm glad you asked that question. Right. I mean, and the kiosks, it's, it's the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. And when I say the tip of the iceberg, everybody that's out there, you know what an iceberg is. It, 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 you see this big thing at the top, but below, it's so much larger. Mm -hmm. And the kiosk is part of a larger play. Mm -hmm. As we think about digital, and I say digital transformation, mm -hmm. we've become a partner with the, the county, mm -hmm. the Shelby County government. And we're partnering to begin to move in a digital transformative way. So we're transforming how people access services. Okay. We want to give them an additional right, way. Right, right. The old way is still there. You can still call a number. You can still go to the office. But, hey, how do we reach more people? So mm -hmm. this kiosk is a means to give access to services. Mm -hmm. And we're partnering to drive those services, whether it's rent or utility assistance, veterans assistance, aging mm -hmm. commission, whatever it is. Or even better yet, there's a link to driving the dream that's going to give you access to all types of services. Mm -hmm. So what we're talking about, those kiosks, is another conduit for right. people to walk into a community center, a library, a grocery store, at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. So we want to bring the services to you instead of you trying to find the services. So that kiosk is the way, United Way, in partnership <laughs> with the government, to mm -hmm. say, hey, you know what? We're going to take the services to you. We're going to get people the help they need so we can change crime, so we can change the poverty rate, right. so we can do all the things that we've been talking about. we got an election coming up. A lot of candidates are talking about how they're going to change. We're on the ground mm -hmm. working to make the change at the root level. And that's by bringing the service. Did you hear what he said, though? We're yeah. on the ground. Yeah. We're not just sitting up in the big box, ringing the bell, and expecting people to come mm -hmm. in. Those kiosks mm -hmm. we're placing out in 28 different locations mm -hmm. out in the community yes, sir. where people are, where their traffic is already going, so that they can have access. And we talk about equitable access. You know, there was a time, yeah, you wouldn't believe this, of course, I'm being facetious, that, mm -hmm. you know, only certain people had access to the services that mm -hmm. they need. Yes, sir. But what we're trying to do at United Way is to to democratize this thing, mm -hmm. put it out there with the people, put the kiosks out in mm -hmm. the areas where they're already walking, and then give them the opportunity to have equitable access. You tell us what you need, and you uh, input uh, your areas of support and services that mm -hmm. uh, we can provide for you, and we'll work with you yep. to get you, here it is, from where you are, right? right. To where you dream to dream be. be. Y'all know what it is. But yeah, yeah I, I, I think the kiosk thing is a really good idea because it's like a lot of people, sure, you can go on the website, you can do those same things on the website, but you have to know about it. You have to right. know about what Driving the Dream is. You have to know about United Way's website. But I'm just out at Kroger and I see this kiosk, like, man, I really do need help. I yeah. didn't even know this was available. You can be out in the library, wherever you are, and just fill this out, and, and you see the wealth of services that are available to you. I think that's one of the biggest problems in the city is that there are a lot of services out there. There are a lot of organizations who do amazing work, 
a lot of people just don't know about it. There's just that disconnect between the services and getting people connected to the help that they need. And I think that's going to be And, awesome. you know, in the traditional way, it costs a lot of money for nonprofits right. to advertise right, their right, services. Right, right, right. And so that's not what a whole lot of donors mm -hmm. pay you to do. So it's very difficult. There are over 5,000 nonprofits. There are a gazillion churches doing right. amazing mm -hmm. work out in the community. But if you don't just happen to bump into them, then you don't know mm -hmm. it. And that's one of the reasons that at United Way now we're building partnerships with the faith community, with right. other businesses, with health care. We want people to understand that we are here. But, boy, putting the kiosk in the path of somebody right. is a great idea, and we yeah. appreciate that. Yeah, and I think even like you just talked about the kiosk and putting the path, as I talked about it, being the tip of the iceberg, yeah. you mm -hmm. know. United Way wants to be the tip of the spear. I'm saying a lot of tips. <laughs> we want to be the tip of the spear. We want to be that, that driving force to begin the insertion process. And once we're there, then we're able to spread and give access to other people and mm. other services and other, the faith community, other nonprofits. But I think the other part of that is, as we think about the kiosk, the kiosk is just one mode of delivery. Mm -hmm. So as we think about the kiosk was, 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 was round one or phase one, because the kiosk actually can expand to a mobile app. So mm -hmm. if you have an iPhone or Android, being able to download that app in the mm -hmm. store, it's that process. Then as we expand beyond that, as we talked about the social media triggers. Mm -hmm. So we have all these digital triggers that we're going to be able to expand upon, yeah. mm -hmm. but we're still doing the work. And the flip side of that, we're training our partners. As, as Dr. Robinson talked about, all these network access partners that we have, the people that we're working with on a regular basis. We're not just saying, hey, we want you to be a part of our network. We want you to give some services. We're doing things to empower those agencies. So mm -hmm. in other words, we're having trainings. We're having specific <laughs> things that we're right. facilitating toward them <laughs> to get them ready. This has never <laughs> happened before in the yeah, nonprofit no, community. No. And, and by the way, we have the old-fashioned toll-free phone number that people can call, 844 <laughs> 444 Four two yeah. one one, yes, sir. and you know that does still work with people who have the cell phones as right. well. For sure, uh, Dr. Robinson, you talked about the faith based side. Uh, for those who don't know, you are a very long time, very respected former pastor in the, in the city. Of Thank Memphis. you, sir. You were. Uh, I remember you being a beacon in the community I grew up in, in the South Memphis area, and I saw you transition from that role to this role with United Way of the Mid South. Yeah. How much has your past being a pastor in the urban in, in the urban communities in in the inner city in you know a low income uh, area code I mean zip code that you were serving in How has that transferred over to you well, now being you, president? You know, it's been my lived experience. Mm -hmm. I, I've been a pastor for thirty three years, mm -hmm. so yes, I've sir. been in the community. I know families. I know kids. I've walked among them. I've mm -hmm. been among them. I grew up in the church and an urban uh, African American community in Nashville, and I think. Uh, translating what I did there into what I'm doing here, not difficult. It's all about serving people, meeting their needs where they are, whether you, like I think you might have been a young man playing a little basketball in our gym <laughs> at one time. Probably so, yeah. Yeah, a couple of good lock-ins and stuff like that. There yeah, you go, I go have, into yep. our lock-ins, uh -huh. you know, building relationships with young people, right. also tapping into uh, what their thoughts and hopes and dreams are but also providing not only high-quality after-school services, uh, providing a charter elementary school that we take kids who are failing in mainstream schools and make them superstars mm -hmm. academically. We build housing uh, for uh, families that never, ever thought they would be able to own their own house, high-quality multifamily housing, build a grocery store, right. you know, put sidewalks in. And so it's about personal development, family development, community development, and it's all about economic development, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you're stuck, you're not going to advance. And by the way, if you're stuck, you're going to be uh, a challenge for the rest of the community and the people around you mm -hmm. because you do things that folks who are stuck do. Right. And so my whole life and ministry and career uh, has been about uh, helping people advance uh, socially, uh, uh, socioeconomically, uh, economically. And, uh, and so, you know, one plus two means that you're making socioeconomic mm -hmm. advancement and you're, you're going to be in, in a different place uh, at the end of the day than you were right. when I first met you. It's ministry. Right. It's, it's definitely crossover for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Jarvis, you, you played football here at uh, Fairleigh High School. You were uh, running back there. You played for the University of Memphis for, 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 for a little spell, a little season. <laughs> this is a sports show, of course. Um, where, where is there an intersection where sports and reaching out to the community, where they can intersect? So, I, I, so you're 100% you're right. I, I will make one statement. So I never really, like, fully did the <laughs> University of Memphis football thing. Okay. You know, it, it, it was a part of 
the heart burst, but actually running out on Liberty Memorial <laughs> Stadium. Never happened. You, you know, that, that part never happened. But uh, like I said, I, I was a football player and I played football for many years. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that was ingrained in me. But I think you, when you think about the intersection between sports and, and nonprofits, mm -hmm. and in a way, I think there is an avenue because as we talked about from driving the dream and the side of, hey, it's more to it than dribbling a ball or catching a pass. Mm -hmm. But there is a group that looks at that audience to say, that's my guidance. That's where I want to be. They look to them as role models. They mm -hmm. look to sports figures as the, the, the gold standard. Mm -hmm. So I think the first intersection point can be is being able to partner with sports agencies and sports mm -hmm. organizations and the players mm -hmm. to yeah. say, hey, how do you take your influence and your brand to impact young people, to impact the city, to right. raise funds, to do the good work? I, I know we talk a lot about the things that John Moran has going mm -hmm. on or the Grizzlies starting five. And ideally, I'll say, I'm going to give you an outreach right now. <laughs> Grizzly starting five. Partner with United Well of the Mid-South. Yeah, we man. have a campaign yeah. for you where we can go out and change this community. And I think the intersection happens when athletes and teams start to use their influence to talk about changing communities, yeah. Yeah. changing neighborhoods. You know, I know the, the Tigers go out on Thanksgiving and feed the homeless. Mm -hmm. But how about feeding the homeless in October and September? And other times, using that influence to spread the wealth right. of not only the money, but the knowledge, the influence, and letting young people see, if Desmond Bain did it, I can do it yeah. too. He yeah. can't just flip a coin. He can serve people. And yeah. we understand that sports for a lot of kids is really the, the ticket. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the ticket up. It's the ticket out. Um, unfortunately, and you know it, we all know mm -hmm. it very well, uh, even if you have the great fortune, the skill, the talent, the coaching to get out, uh, it doesn't last forever. And so um, uh, many young people have to understand they have to prepare themselves. Mm -hmm. It's about financial education, financial literacy. Uh, they have to understand that if they're going to be great and they're going to be able to use mm -hmm. the resources that they earn from being an athlete and their brand, even while they're in college, now that they can mm -hmm. do that, uh, you want to be able to set it up apart for you, for your children, for your own family, but then you want to be able to give it mm -hmm. back to the community that gave you birth and supported you. And, and you know, um, you, you play NBA sports, it's uh, on the average of four and a half yeah. years right. uh, in the league. For the NFL, it's on the average of 3.3 years. Mm -hmm. And so there is a life. And what we want young people to understand is mm -hmm. that there are hopes and aspirations and dreams that right. live beyond their their sports careers, and we're grateful for athletes that are giving that message today. Yeah, I play, and yes, I'm supportive of the community too because we want everybody, all the boats to rise. We want uh, not only to have a few multimillionaires that are living in the community playing uh, professional sports, but we want the community around us also mm. uh, to be elevated and be uh, advanced economically. The United Way does a lot, like, going out into the community. Like, every, literally every event that's happened this year, United Way has posted up, spreading the word about the programs they offer, driving the dream, all those type of things, whether it's Cooper Young Festival, the Southern Heritage Classic. We've been everywhere. Uh, the event that really gets me going is Trunk or Treat, which uh. is coming up in, in, a, in a few weeks, October 21st, on a Saturday. We bring the community to us on that particular event. What stands out about that event, and what should people expect at uh, trunk or treat this year over a thousand families Literally. that's what stands mm -hmm. out because we understand that uh you know traditionally people look forward to the halloween festivities mm -hmm. trunk or treat but for our trunk or treat not only do we have all the goodies have all the food have all the candy but our corporate partners are out there with their yes. own trunks yes and they're, offering they're, services. they're telling yeah. some cool things about what they do we've got engineers out there showing things that are really uh, wonderful mm -hmm. and exciting for kids to come by we've got nonprofits introducing their services mm -hmm. to families health services that's yeah. right health services social service you can come mm -hmm. get vaccinated by the way everybody ought to get vaccinated right. against the flu and everything else that's out there including mm -hmm. covid we but we do that, but it's a touch point, Anthony. That's the nice thing, yes. that we're not sitting in that that big uh, corporate building there just for, um, you know, show. Mm -hmm. We're part of the community, and we're living in a community, frankly, that has a lot of needs and issues also. So for those families, those kids last year, uh, over 1,000 for the last few years, 
over a thousand people would come by and just feel the vibe. You know, our staff will be out there, you'll be out there, you'll mm-hmm. be grinning, you'll be shinning. You know, with, we're, with my son, he'll be out there having yeah, a good time. Yeah. You know, and, and so it's partly building the relationship. That's why we're mm-hmm. out in the community on the Saturdays at the festivals and mm-hmm. uh, and just being present. Uh, we're not asking anything of people unless you want to give us a donation the United Way. <laughs> but we're also presenting ourselves uh-huh. to the folks and uh, wanting to be uh, visible and present in that space. Everybody come October twenty one, right? Uh, right, got to be there for sure. I'm telling you, it's it's a blast, man. Like and I, it's safe. Yeah, it's safe. Very oh, safe. Yeah. We're, we're, we're gonna thank we're, you. So you can get out, and sometimes you want to take your children to an event and let them collect some candy. Right. As Dr. Robinson said, you can get the information that's can in power you and help your family mm-hmm. while your children have fun, fun. while they're safe. Right. So we have security there. Right. We make sure every vendor's vetted. So it's not just you show up and hope for the best. No, you show up and you it's get incredible. the best. Yeah, You're going to get the best. There's uh, jobs doing job fairs and hiring people on the spot. There were people who came to get candy for the kids and had a job starting Monday. Like How it, about it, that, right? It was happening. Yeah, <laughs> it was happening right there on the spot for sure. Uh, of course, I have Jarvis Harris. And uh, Dr. Kenneth Robinson from United Way, did you gentlemen have any closing remarks? Make sure y'all let people know how they can get in touch with United Way's uh, services or if they want to donate to such a great organization. Yeah, I, I really appreciate uh, your having us. Mm-hmm. Uh, UWMidSouth.org. Mm-hmm. UWMidSouth.org is our website. Lots of information there for people inclined. The toll-free number I will give because it's easy to remember, <laughs> even for me, John, is 844-444-444. 4211. If you need housing, education, child care, health care, if you're looking for counseling, you need a, a job training to mm-hmm. get in. Over 200 supports and yes, services. Sir. Call us there. And then uh, just lift us up. Uh, remember United Way of the Mid South. Mm-hmm. Tell somebody about it. Introduce a family to it. Let's see how many thousands of people in the Mid South we can help move yeah. from where we are and where they are to where they dream to be. Yeah, man, good stuff for sure. These My boss is here, <laughs> Dr. Kenneth Robinson. My man. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Jarvis Harris of United Way in the Mid-South, man. Uh, great conversation with you guys. Like I said, I'm excited to be a part of everything that we do here with United Way. Things about to rev up. Uh, yeah, man, it's exciting times. Make sure y'all check out Trunk or Treat again, October 21st. I don't even know our address. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I just go to work every day. <laughs> but it's <laughs> 1005 Tillman? 1005 Yeah, tell me. Yeah, I knew. Memphis, Tennessee, 38112. Right Pull up. off of Jackson Avenue. Right Pull up. Off Jackson Avenue. And just to speak hood terms, if you know where you used to get food stamps at on Jackson, it's out on that end of Tillman. It ain't the other Tillman, but the, uh, that one. That Tillman. Be on that end by Jackson and Tillman. But yeah, y'all come check it out for sure. Much love to these brothers, man. Jarvis Harris, Kenneth Robinson, United Way to Miss South.